Hey guys, uh, this video is continuation of sending HTTP POST request in REST Assured. Now in this video, we will be focusing on creating a model or POJO class and supplying request payload or body using the same. So people who don't know what POJO is, POJO stands for plain old Java object and it is used for increasing the readability and reusability of a program. So as I explained in the last two videos, any data structure we use to construct the request payload, it has to be serialized to JSON before uh, sending it over to the server. The advantage of using POJO classes is that we can use it in both request and response body. So while sending the request, we got to serialize the POJO instance into a JSON format using the Google JSON library we added in part six of this video series. Same ways, on receiving the response, we can deserialize the response body into the same POJO class instance and then work with it. Now, let me quickly walk you through what the serialization and deserialization are. Now, this concept is not just limited to Java, it is available in all major programming languages. So, serialization is the process when you convert an instance of a class or object of a class into a byte stream. Now, this byte stream can then be stored as a file on the disk or can also be sent to another computer via the network. Okay. So, we are going to send the request body over to another computer, which is a server using the HTTP protocol, which works over the network, isn't it? So serialization can uh, also be used to save the state of object when the program shuts down or hibernates. So once the state is saved on disk using uh, serialization, we can restore the state by deserializing the class from the disk. Now in Java, a serializable object is an object which inherits from either of the two interfaces, java.io.serializable and the other one is java.io.externalizable. But guys, since we are using Google JSON, okay, so we don't have to implement this explicitly, okay. And deserialization process is just opposite of serialization. In this process, we'll read the serialized byte stream from the file and convert it back into the class instance representation. Okay. Now let's create the POJO class and POJO basically defines an entity. So let us open Eclipse and start with the coding part. So under this source test Java, create a package models and add a class member. Make sure that the name of your class is singular. Now the fields or property of this class has to exactly match with the request or response body, whichever is the superset. So this is my post request and the request body has got just name and gender. Okay. But when you make the get request, you also see this ID because ID is automatically generated by the system, which means that you don't need to pass it in the request payload but if you do so okay the systems are smart and let's see what this is going to do so if i say the id i want to set it to 12 okay and when you send it so it says it's a bad request and please provide only name and gender if you just pass a zero in here and hit the send button again you will get this okay so when we use a pojo for the first time okay will see the same message in mm -hmm. rest assured fields or the property of this class has to exactly match the request or response body, whichever is superset. Okay. So which one is a superset in our case response body is the superset. Okay. Now another concept is that the data type of these fields should also match with the response body. Okay. So we say int for ID and then we say private string for name. And then same way we have private string for gender. So now guys, we have to create a constructor. So do a right click, go to source and select this generate constructor using fields. Now this ID is generated by the system. Okay. So we don't need this. Okay. So let's click. Okay. So this is my constructor, which takes in the name and the gender attributes. Okay. Next thing we have to create the getter and setters for all of these fields. Okay. So again, we go to source and we say generate getters and setters. Now this time we have to select all and we click. Okay. So then comes two string because uh, 
you know, when there is a problem, we require to do the debugging. And this two string method is very helpful in debugging. So we again go to source and we create this two string method. And this time again, we select all the three fields. We click OK. So guys, our model or you can also call it Pojo class is now ready. Now you might come across another concept which is called as beans. So guys, beans are special type of Pojos. There are some restrictions on Pojo to be a bean. If we add a non-argument constructor in this class, then it would become a bean. Okay. Please note, all Java beans are Pojo, but not all Pojos are Java beans. Okay. So I'm gonna save this and go to my test file. This is the same code that we have been writing in the last two videos, okay, to get the response. But we need to now create the body and we're going to create this body using the Pojo class we just created. So I'm going to say member and body is equal to, let's import this member, all right. Make sure that you import it from the right place. So you have models.member, you do it from here and you have new member. Okay, so in here now you have to provide those name and gender fields. So we say Steve and let's set it to male. Okay, so guys, now if we send this request right away, okay, we are gonna get this message. Okay, why? Because we have set the name and gender, but if we do not set the integer value, okay, it will take the default value which would be zero okay so let us now save everything and hit this request there you go okay so we get this let me first print this to the console body dot to string okay so i'm gonna save it and run it Alright, so as you could see, id is equal to zero. Now, what is the solution? How can we fix this? There are two ways, guys. First one is using the transient keyword, and the other one is using the Google JSON library. So let's see the transient way. Now, what is this transient keyword which I'm talking about? Now, guys, transient is used to indicate that a field should not be part of the serialization process. Okay. What does that mean? Okay. So what I'm going to say is I don't want to send this. Okay. Because this has to be generated by the system and then only this API would work. Okay. And for that, the first solution is we just add transient in front of this. Okay. Like this, save it. And now if we go back and run this, now let's see what will happen. So there you go. Okay. So while serializing, okay, we are not sending this value. Okay. And therefore this object is now created and you can check that using the log method, which I told you in one of the video dot all. Okay, so you save it, you first delete the record that we have created. So this is the record that we have created. So is restarted, we go back, hit the run button again. Okay, so as you could see, this is what we sent in the request body. Okay, and therefore it worked and without this transient keyword. So I'm going to save it and again run this. Now let us look at the request body. Okay. So that's the thing I was talking about. Okay. So in here in the body, we are sending this. Okay. So whenever you use this transient keyword, okay, you ensure that whenever you're serializing this class, Okay, you exclude this property. Okay. 
all right guys now i'm gonna show you one more way and then we'll talk about which one is better okay so then the next thing that we have to do is i'm gonna comment this out and we're gonna make use of the google json library okay so whichever fields i want to expose okay for serialization i'm gonna mention that explicitly okay how can i do that so i just create this field once and on top of that i'm gonna use an annotation which is expose okay this comes from google.json.annotations.expose okay guys let's copy this and annotate the remaining fields okay but the thing is i'm exposing it okay and i want to have a greater control on this field like you know i don't want to use that in the serialization process all you have to do is you have to say serialize is equal to false okay now like i said we can use the same pojo class to also read the response body okay so in that case you say very simple you say deserialize is equal to true which means that you know in the response body you will uh, find this field so just load that in here all right so this is how you have to decorate your pojo class using the expose annotations coming from this google json live let's save everything okay and we go to our mm -hmm. test case let us set it to false so this is my test case create member using model uh, json exclusion bdd it's a three step process number one you have to create the member object so i'm just gonna use the previous one make few changes and instead of body i'm just gonna call it member okay then we have to create the json object by excluding fields without expose annotation so we have to create the object of this json okay let me bring that in it comes from again com.google.json and let's create an object of it and the way we are going to do it after adding those annotations is we are going to say new uh, json builder okay and then we have expose yeah exclude uh, fields without expose annotations and then we have the method create okay all right so we have this now and then we have to convert the member instance into json okay so we say json dot to uh, json okay this is the method in here you have to provide in the object so then the object that we have is this what does it return it returns you the string so now we're gonna say string body is equal to this all right and then we supply it to the request object okay like so we save it and we first check that we have the steve object and not steven okay now i'm gonna run this test case and there you go the record is created okay let's check that in the database as well so steven is also created now we have multiple options okay either we use transient or we use this particular expose annotation way which one is better well go for this expose annotation why because if you set this keyword transient against a property okay it is applicable to your complete program all right but if you go for this expose okay you have to use this syntax okay which means that you know that you want to serialize or deserialize something okay you have more control over your program but this becomes global okay so if there is a dependence in your project which does not want this transient behavior unfortunately we can't achieve that using this approach but with this okay if you do not use this json builder concept okay that field would be considered for both serialization and deserialization out of the box okay i hope you like this i'll see you in the next video thanks for watching